Welcome Transformers fans, my name is Composite Energy, and today I will be bringing you my review of the Transformers Thrilling 30, uh, Generation Thrilling 30 Deluxe Class Dreadwing and here he is in his really really cool looking uh, alt mode that is based on the um, uh, what's it called, the B2 Spirit Stealth Bomber and I gotta say this is a really really nice alt mode and if you look up pictures of the B2 Spirit, it looks really, it looks almost identical to this. Um, key difference being that the wings are actually supposed to be longer and the middle bit's supposed to be shorter, but it's really close. It is really, it, I'm impressed by how, how close this is to the actual vehicle. And it's really nice. It has a bit of kibble underneath, but I guess, but once it, that's, you know, to be expected with jet formers, but for what it is, also considering that the actual ship is supposed to be a lot flatter, this is not bad. This is doable. Especially since they did a really good job with a very convincing stealth bomber mode. And, um... Yeah, so this is Dreadwing. And the colors are the colors and alt mode are based on his G Generation 2 uh, alt, mode, uh, alt mode and color scheme. And I really like this. This is a really, really nice bomber. We don't get too many stealth bombers. The, the, we don't... This, uh, this isn't really a very common, um... A vehicle and it's really nice to, to see it and actually done rare and uh, done really well so i guess that's enough about the uh, vehicle mode let me get on to the uh, transformation so first you come back here and you pop off this wing and this wing and these will be important uh, later so i'm gonna put them to the side so th th here we have the the rest so then you come here Separate this, pull, pop that up, pull that apart, pop it up. Then you come in here, bring out the legs. Come out here, bring out the legs. His transformation is actually pretty simple. However, I think um, doing it the first time, pull out the leg, pull out the leg. Like um, getting him back into his bomber mode, into his alt mode can be kind of tricky the first couple times rotate forward rotate forward and then for this part you bring you bring that apart bring that apart rotate you bring it down yeah, okay i guess yeah bring like split like that oh and one thing i forgot to mention because honestly i just genuinely forgot the the bomber mode does have landing gear and I think it had, did it have like molded landing gear somewhere? Oh, right here. Like on the, on this beat there, you have the molded in landing gear. So he had landing gear. I, I honestly just completely forgot about it. Good thing I, good thing I saw it here. So yeah, he does have a pull out landing gear. Then you fold out this part to both reveal the head. Pull the arms back. And then you flip that down. But before that, you have to go up here. And as you can see, you clip that onto there. Fold these up. Bring it down and clip it onto there. And then you angle it so that this tip attaches to that. Hold on. It's not a. Don't clip them in yet. You need the clearance. It's, it's a bit finicky. This is a chest part. Kind of wish they would have done a little bit easier. So yeah. Until you're able to. Until you're able to bring this. Doesn't want to do it now. Wait. Oh, there we go. Like that. And bring that in. Bring that in. I, I guess, honestly, my biggest complaint is that how this entire uh, chest portion is transformed, at least on mine, it makes this chest bit uh, pr uh, prone to pop off. I kind of wish this had a much stronger connection. Because it is prone to popping off. Then, um, same thing with the. Well, these are, these are fine, I guess. I just have it in a weird angle. Wait. There we go. I just had it in a weird angle. These are actually pretty tight, but this chest bit, it, it does, it's not a strong connection. 
which, which is kind of unfortunate. Pull out the hands, pull out the hands. Now there we go, that's Dreadwing. And I really like this robot mode. Let me put the camera up. There we go. And this is a really, really nice looking robot mode. I ain't gonna lie, I'm, I'm a big fan. And it actually, and check out that head sculpt. And he's got pretty, pretty nice light piping too. And he does resemble, if you look up pictures of the original uh, Generation 2 Dreadwing, because he's actually, well first up there was a Generation 2 Transformers, it was very short lived, and Dreadwing was one of the new characters for that, for that uh, year, I guess, or a couple months. Yeah, uh, also for some reason these panels do go in and out, I don't exactly know why. Oh, he does have a heel, like when you fold this out. The heel kind of just stops there and it pops out automatically. So he does have heels. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I I'm gonna lie. If someone could, I have yet to figure out what what the whole point of this flipping out is. But whatever, not not that important. Uh, he does have knees. To articulation, he has quite a bit. He has a huge range of movement. Arms go that far. It can go 360. Rotation there. Elbow. Head is on a very stiff ball joint. At least on mine is. Ball joints on the legs, and ball joints do what ball joints do. Can rotate. Really nice knee. And a little bit of a little bit of feet. So he has a wide range of movement. And honestly, if if this was a if this was a much tighter connection, I would he would honestly be um, he'd be he'd be so much better. But this is really annoying. I kind of wish that was designed differently, or at least uh, clipped in a little bit tighter. But that is my only technical complaint. Other than that, this figure's this figure's just fantastic. The only thing that can make it better would be a waist and hand wrist uh, rotation. But yeah, he's, he's fantastic. Also, let's get to his weapons, which are also pretty neat. This is his what these the wing parts are his weapon. You pull out this handle, and then you connect them together, like so. And then you pull this back. You grab these wing. Uh, well, These wing bits and pull them back. And then you pull them forward to sort of retract them. So back and forward, back, forward, which is pretty fun. And then you have this uh, cannon, which you. He can't hold it. But honestly, I find that a bit, a, bit, uh, a bit lame. I don't particularly like it. I actually like plugging it onto his arm. On this arm. No, no, on this arm. This arm. This arm's fine. So now he has this uh, fusion cannon on his hand. And yeah, I said fusion cannon. There is a reason for that. And that's because um, this little feature, which well, I'll mention, I guess I'll mention now, he has this really cool uh, fusion cannon. Where you can have sort of a base mode and then full on mode. Which is really cool. This is, this is really cool. I'm not a big fan of the parts forming, the parts forming where you have to like pop off the wings, but I do like that the wings turn into a really cool cannon. Rico looking can and still hate that. But um yeah, nothing really else. This is a great figure. The transformation's pretty cool. Finicky at first, especially in the chest area. I still wish the chest connection was a lot tighter. He he needs it. But other than that, it's a fantastic figure. I, I highly recommend a Dreadwing here. And um he wasn't exactly repainted. Well he was, he was. And funny enough, Dreadwing. Even though I but I believe that this entire mold was designed specifically for Dreadwing. Um, this mold was used first for a Megatron of all things, which kind of explains why his weapon is an arm-mounted fusion cannon. But yeah. This use this was a Megatron, which had a different head and a I think a black and gray color scheme. And then um he was then repainted into what it was meant to be, which was Dreadwing here. And then it was uh, repainted again in the Timelines uh, toy line as an exclusive somewhere as Croc of all characters. The paint scheme was nice, but but why Croc? It, it's just a weird, weird choice for a carrot for uh, for this mold. And then it's uh, this mold is actually coming back again as funny enough another Megatron for the last night. Yeah. The Deluxe Class, the uh, I, what is it, the Premium Edition, the Last Night Premium Edition, Deluxe Class Megatron is going to use this mold again. So we went from a Megatron, Dreadwing, and then back to a Megatron, you know, of the, of the uh, regular lines. 
not including the uh, exclusive. And I believe they did repaint the Dreadwing again with more, I guess, G2 accurate colors. I don't know if that's like 100% or maybe I just saw someone do someone's custom, but yeah. So overall, with this mold, honestly, pick Dreadwing. Yeah, you can get Mega, you can get any of the Megatrons, you could get Croc, fine if you really want to, but honestly, this mold was meant for Dreadwing. This is Dreadwing, he is the B2 bomber. I think the only thing that would have made this cooler would be if he came with Smoke Jumper, like his uh, original G2 toy uh, came with. That, I think, would have been the only thing that would have made it cooler. But, but yeah, this is a fantastic figure, highly recommended, big complaint, I wish this pegged in uh, tighter, this, I, think, I wish that was a tighter connection. I still don't know if that's just my copy of other, or if other people could have that issue. But other than that, it's fantastic alt mode, cool transfer, pretty nifty transformation, not too complicated, but like pretty involved, pretty nice. Cool weapon, really cool robot mode, and just overall a really, really nice figure. I highly recommend it. So yeah, this has been my review of the Transformers uh, Generations Thrilling 30 Deluxe Class Dreadwing. And this is Composite Energo signing off. Peace out.